The Agricultural Experiment Station began growing hemp in 2019 following changes to the law and the implementation of a state growing plan. Marijuana and hemp are the same genus and species of plant called cannabis sativa. This plant can be bred to produce either THC, which is psychoactive, or CBD, which is not. Cannabis is an annual plant which grows from seed to mature in a single season, with the timing of bud formation generally based upon length of day. It is also a dioecious plant, meaning the flowers are either male or female, with, with the males producing copious amounts of pollen, which travel readily in the wind to the female flowers. It is important to note that the female flowers contain the highest concentration of CBD, and the presence of seed will dramatically reduce the quality of the final product. For this reason, male plants are undesirable. There are two means of getting female plants. First is a chemical treatment of the seed resulting in all females. Second is purchasing clones, or essentially propagating plants through cuttings. Greenhouse growers can keep plants growing in a vegetative state by controlling the day length. They call such plants mother plants. While cannabis is a fairly hardy plant, it is still subject to a number of pests, and there are very few pesticides registered for application. However, the biggest threat for hemp growers is producing a crop that exceeds the legally allowable limit of 0.3% of THC. If this happens, the crop must be destroyed, resulting in a significant waste of time and money. In 2019, we planted five varieties of hemp at Lockwood Farm in an effort to both learn more about best growing practices and about varietal differences in terms of THC CBD content. When we started looking for seed, we found it was both expensive and limited, so the only seed we could find in small quantities was non-feminized. We planted seedlings two feet apart with the belief we would be trimming out half the plants or so and use black plastic to control the weeds. Following are some pictures of our hemp crop in 2019. The biggest takeaway from our 2019 growing experience is that culling the males requires a lot of diligence. The buds develop from barely visible to fully mature within a few days, so constant monitoring is essential. All of the varieties were quite variable in the way they looked in regards to leaf shape, leaf color, and overall plant size. In addition, the buds didn't all bloom at the same time, which makes the culling of males even more difficult. While overall pests were not a huge problem, there was still some damage from corn borer, some root rot, and possibly some viral damage causing a leaf curl. Oddly enough, one variety was predominantly male, with only about 25% of plants in the row being female. I should also say that this crop is very sticky and very smelly. However, the biggest issue we had was that the Young Sim 10 variety exceeded the legal limit of 0.3% THC, which resulted in an order from the Department of Ag to destroy our crop. We had no intention of harvesting the crop, but I would like to mention that growers should have a plan for drying the hemp as this requires a substantial amount of both space and time. For the 2020 growing season, we selected six new varieties of hemp and we planted the Young Sim 10 from last year. The new varieties are all feminized seed because we learned last year that this is a fairly important consideration and we were able to find small quantities of non-feminized seed this year. 
Because we are not expecting a lot of culling, we planted the seedlings four feet apart. Our seedlings went in the ground on June 25, 2020, just as the weather warmed up. This year, in addition to THC and CBD testing, we are hoping to do some testing for terpenes, as well as possibly other components that affect the quality of the final products. Walt and I would like to thank staff at the Experiment Station for assisting in this project, particularly Dr. Jason White for supporting the work, Rich Ciccarelli for doing most of the field work, Mike A for getting sticky in the field, Kitty for helping in the lab with sample preparation and technical guidance, Lastly, all the other members of AC for their continued support and technical expertise. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us during the scheduled question and answer session, or both Walt and I can be reached by phone or email. Thank you for your interest in our project today.